Hey guys, welcome to another episode here. This is a uh, little quick side project, the starter motor. Well, we have all this apart. These little runts are, can be a big problem on some skis. They're hard to get to because they're up underneath. But while we have everything apart, we may as well check it out. I know that this starter motor works because I started the ski and three times, like I heard it kick over three times. The starter motor sounded okay. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't need to do something with it, but at least I know it's not completely busted. But here's the really good news is, you see this manufacturer? It's Suba. That's the, uh, the original manufacturer of these. So that means that this is an OEM starter, which is fantastic news because if we do need to rebuild it, that's the best thing to do. The recommendation is to not use an aftermarket starter like ones from SBT, et cetera, because those things last for a season or two and then they fail on you. Um, the, what you typically do is you either rebuild your starter or you find a, a used OEM starter like this one and rebuild that one. So we're just going to open it up and have a look-see. So we've taken these two long bolts out here and just popped this thing open. I'm going to pull this off. A little bearing in there that we're going to look at in a second. O-ring. We got our end off here. Sorry I didn't show that. I, I put it on a vise and just put the ears down on the edges of the vise. Didn't clamp it, you know, just these to catch these ears here and then just very gently, you know, tap the bottom off and it came right apart. And so here's the goodies. So we've got our armature in the middle. And, you know, I'm just looking at it. I don't know if you can see it, but a common prop. These are the brushes here. And uh, a common problem is the armatures, the brushes can, they're usually carbon. And in between the little conductors on those things, they can build up carbon in there, which causes them to arc across, and that makes your starter motor fail. So I'm just going to look at that real close, but, you know, if I don't need to replace any of this stuff, I'm not going to mess with it because it just brushes electronics and bearings. So if all that stuff is okay, I'm not going to overdo this, but I just, I did want to go in here and look at it. These brushes, the brushes are these little carbon pieces that fit up against the armature. And there's a little coiled spring. You can see it there. And what I'm going to do is take all those off and remove these brushes. And you can see if I pull this armature up and down, it's going to slide out. I can feel a little tug because of the magnets inside here. But if I just pull it all the way out, it'll come out. But all these things are going to, they're going to spring forward, you know. You have to push this thing out here. before you can take this little outside piece, take that out. Now I can take this, don't wanna lose that piece. Just like any other motor, I'm just going to go through here and clean out any dust here, carbon buildup from those brushes. And then I'm going to blow it 
with compressed air. And then I'm going to grease those axles on the end. That's all you have to do on this. So, uh, what I discovered in the midst of this is something I should have noticed in the beginning, but I didn't because it was the first time I've taken apart one of these starter motors. But this, these two pieces here that I thought were separate pieces should not be separate pieces. It's actually broken in two, you know, and so if you look at that, you know, that should be one piece. And so that right away is is why obviously the starter motor was was uh sticking or hanging according to the previous owner. Well, it's no wonder, you know, that if th this brake here, this is where the positive post goes. And so, you know, this one's going to have good con conductivity. But this one is going to be intermittent depending on whether or not it's touching the other one or not, just based on where it's cracked. And so good thing I took this apart. Um, at some point, I was not going to take it apart, but I'm glad I did take it apart because this is why you do this. You take it apart, you inspect things, you look for problems. That's a problem. So I have since ordered a rebuild kit, which also has problems with it, but at least the rebuild kit, here's our solid piece there to solve that problem. So that looks pretty good. Um, I've looked at the brush plate here. Um, this is the new one. This is the old one. Um, it's identical. Everything looks like it matches. It's all good. Um, the problem that I did notice though, is that this is the O-rings that, you know, come with the new kit and they're very they're very thin and they're a smaller diameter so like you can even see like look at this if i lay that one on top of it um i don't know if you can see that let me look at that so um so that's not going to work i don't want to use a real thinner crappy gasket in between there it goes here in between this, you know, it's a little thin crack there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make this one work. This just fits a little bit loose. I've actually tried to boil this. I boiled it in boiling water for three minutes and tried to refrigerate it and shrink it and do whatever I can to make it smaller, but it's still a little too big and loose when it lays in here. It just lays in there sloppy. Um, so I'm going to try a couple of things here, but this is probably controversial, but I'm, I'm going to actually cut it. I'm going to cut it and take a little nick out of it. And then I'm going to melt it back together and rejoin it. Okay, so aside from the O-rings here, we just went ahead and moved forward and put this new brush plate in place. Um, it's a little tricky to do, to be honest. I, I took the springs out. I just took a pair of small needle nose and uh, pulled these out and back over. About 90 degrees on all of these. Put the brushes in. You put the armature in, in the middle, and then you got to work it up. And it's a little tedious, but you got to get all these brushes back out of the way for that to go into place. And then you can twist back in your springs for your brushes. And that's where we are now. So once you get that in place, you're pretty good. And the other thing to notice is make sure that this post is not touching anywhere around here, the ground. It's a bad thing to do. 
All right, so our test O-ring is dried. So I'm intentionally going to pull this apart, and I just want to see how much it takes to pull it apart. I'm pulling on it pretty good there. It came apart. So I stretched it pretty good there, and it had enough tug on it. that I think that this will be good enough to hold it at least in place until the until it squished down, and then a little bit of RTV black on the outside will be enough to hold it in place. So I'm gonna make sure I got a good ground connection here, and I'm just gonna grab it real quick, and we're watching for the, the front here, right there, to spin and run. And you can see that's actually working. So that means the motor works pretty good. Now we just need to take it back apart. Just the just the end pieces here. Put our seals on. Put that back together. And then we're going to paint it. All right. So we put a little bit of our ultimate black all around the little rubber gasket that's not an o-ring these things by the way they're um they're called square rings and they're really meant as a gasket that compresses this way and not like a what you normally think of as an o-ring in between two surfaces going this way anyway we're going to put a little bit of red loctite so we don't want this backing out. All right, so we got it all painted. Um, didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. I washed it down pretty good with acetone and then sprayed it with this uh, mercury phantom black enamel spray paint, which I'm kind of fond of. Um, do other stuff with boats with it. And uh, anyway, um, worked out pretty good. That is all sealed up, tested, and ready to go back on the motor. So that's going to complete our starter motor rebuild for this engine. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for another episode of Grey Ghost Resurrection.